In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when He was betrayed, took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. In the same way also, He took the cup after supper, and when He had given thanks, He gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. The familiar context of these very familiar words is, of course, the Last Supper. It is no accident of history or timing that Jesus instituted the sacrament of Holy Communion in conjunction with His final celebration of the Passover with His disciples. The first Passover, however, as established by the Lord, and even referred to as the Lord's Passover, involved the eating of a real meal and real deliverance from a real problem. God's people Israel had been enslaved in Egypt for over 400 years, and He had come to the end of taking them through this purifying fire of testing for their faith. He knew that he, they knew that He would remain with them, and that He had a place reserved for them as promised to their father Abraham. They trusted, in spite of generations' worth of horrible living conditions and great suffering, that God would make good on His covenant, which they also believed by His grace would be finally realized in the sending of His Son. The Lord's Passover came with clear instructions and explanations and preparation was needed for it to be received properly. As that night went forward and as day dawned, the Israelites saw that they were spared of what inspired a deep wailing throughout the land of Egypt, from Pharaoh's house on down. That night, at midnight, the people of Egypt saw the Lord's visitation among them with His righteous and burning wrath against sin. They were shown the consequences for rejecting His word and His call to repentance, even as the close of the commandments shows us. Luther asks in his small catechism, what does God say about these Ten Commandments? He says, I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. With these words which God spoke at Mount Sinai after delivering the law to Moses for the people of Israel and, in fact, all people, He shows us that the chief responsibility parents have toward their children is to raise them up in the Word. One day each of us, including each of our children, will see God face to face. If they are not taught properly to fear, love, and trust in Him above all things, When they see him face to face, they will see only his wrath, as Egypt did on the night of the first Passover. In his law, God calls us to love him and love our neighbors. He warns us that the sinful love of self will result in great sadness, misery, suffering, and ultimately an eternal separation from his loving presence. Throughout the pages of Holy Scripture, He calls us to see our sin and repent, that is, to turn away from it completely. He calls us to let go of that which kills us and to look only to Him for what we truly need in this life as we anticipate the life that is to come. If we examine our lives closely, our thoughts, our words, and our actions, we will see that none of us can stand in the presence of God and expect anything other than His wrath. But God does not leave us with only His law and our guilt. Just as He made good on His promise to free Israel from their captivity and to give them a land of their own, so also He made good on His promise to send His Son into our flesh. He did this not just for the Israelites, but for all people from every nation, from all tribes and peoples, 
and languages. He came here among us and fulfilled the law for each of us. He also established the new covenant, part of which we re-examine tonight as we look again at his words with which he instituted what we call the Lord's Supper. This is the good news that we gather around right now and are called to come together and receive each week in the divine service. All of the scriptures show us that Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of God's promise that he loves us and forgives us. He underwent false accusations, mockery, beatings, lashings, and being spit upon, and all of this led to his painful suffering and death on the cross. He did this for those who did this to him, and also for each of us whose sin brought about its need. But before he went through and overcame death in the grave, he left us with a physical promise that would go with us until our life's end. Here at the altar, we are able to behold God and eat and drink, even as Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel did in our Old Testament reading. In receiving the Lord's Supper, according to Christ's institution and command, having examined ourselves, confessed our sin, acknowledged the faith given to us by grace, and also that His body and blood are truly present for us in the bread and the wine, He visits us not with the wrath that came upon Egypt, but with the forgiveness, life, and salvation that we so desperately need. This is what He brings for all who believe and confess this to be true, who see their sin and turn from it, and who hold to the desire to grow and improve by the work of the Holy Spirit. In our later service tonight, our confirmands will receive this promise for the first time, and in doing this, they will, with their actions, point to what each of them and what each of us believes. If you are a parent of one of these confirmands, or of any child or young person within our congregation, they will need you to help them continue to point to their faith through their actions. So talk with them about it. Bring them here to receive it. And pray that the Lord will keep them in the faith that they confess with us here each week. Nothing is more important than this saving work. And your family's schedule needs to be set around it, not in ways that get around it. It is that important because this gift is not some symbolic reminder of Jesus' sacrifice that we can remember wherever we wish, in whatever ways we wish, in accordance with times that we find convenient. It is a real meal that brings real deliverance from the realest of problems. And Jesus shows that for us plainly. As they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Each of us here is among the many for whom our Lord's blood was poured out. Each of us here belongs here every time that blood is offered. As we do this, we point the world around us to our crucified and resurrected Savior who remains close to us through His means of grace, through which He delivers real deliverance from sin, death, and the devil. Amen. We stand and sing the offertory.